Hello and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. Well, you can see the light coming in. It's daylight now, 6.14 a.m. Central Daylight Time. I'm doing Bellows Club, uh-oh, Bellows Whiskey, American, not Club Whiskey, thank goodness, the American Blended Whiskey. This company was founded in 1830, now owned by Luxco versus Seagram Seven Crown. This company was founded in 1857, now owned by a lot of different people because the Seagram's brands were dispersed in uh, 2000, the year 2000 with the flying cars. All right. <clears throat> I remember going to Disney World in 1976 and they had the year 2000. What would the world be like in the year 2000? It was mostly accurate, you know, saying well, you'll be able to well, you could shop at home from your computer. I guess you could do that in 19 years ago. It wasn't too widespread, but it was starting to kind of take off then. Uh, they didn't really have the idea of smartphones, but that really got in, put into play when Bill Clinton signed the deregu the uh, Telecommunications Act of 1996, which went into effect in 97, which deregulated internet, computer, phone. Because without that, you know, it was like the highly regulated liquor industry today, which kind of restricts, in restricts innovation. But, um, cable companies could only sell cable TV, phone companies only phone, and internet only internet. So there was no real incentive to advance a whole lot. But then when that got passed 22 years ago or went into effect 22 years ago, it just took off the technology took off. So this is why we say on this channel, deregulation is always the best. Um, <clears throat> all right, now there's a push to deregulate distilling where people could do it at home without being illegal and all this. Well, I did this examination 20 minutes ago and I did a bad job, I thought. Not that I did a bad job telling them apart or describing them or doing a rundown. I just was careless. Like I was kept looking at the clock and worrying about the news coming on. I said, no, I just can't. I could just play it off like it was legit and I didn't screw it up, but I can't do that. The integrity of this important <laughs> blended whiskey taste challenge means that I must do it right. I must do it right. I deleted the first one. I was going to call this the follow-up. I said, but that's confusing to people. I just deleted it. What the heck? Um, my biggest gripe is that I have to use more of the Seagram's and I hate to drink it now. I'm trying to like, you know what I mean? I'm trying to like be careful with this. I can milk it for all I can on these taste challenges. I don't want to go buy anymore. I'm not going to buy anymore. But I consider it like the premier American blended whiskey. It'll run you about $12, $13 a bottle. Bellows is hardly premier, and you probably won't even find it. But if you do find a liter bottle, that's $7.50 a liter. We're talking about $8.99 at international market. You might say, well, that's doggone cheap. Unusually cheap. Yeah, you're right. And it's unusually dark for what you're getting, isn't it? You say, wow, it's 80% grain neutral spirits and it's that deep amber. You would almost think coloring was added. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? Then if you read the regulations, you find out that blended, don't drip, blended American whiskey can have coloring added. And they don't have to disclose that. I mean, they can, they can tell you we added coloring but they don't have to. It's like beer, you know? You get a lot of these beers and they taste remarkably like regular old beer. You say, well, I got this traditional lager from Pennsylvania or Tampa, Florida. It's so dark. And you say to yourself, yeah, and it tastes so much like a lot of other regular beers. Or you might get a so-called Bach from Texas and you say, 
Yeah, it's only four point something percent alcohol, not really baki. It's dark, but it tastes like kind of like regular old beer. And you start to think, hmm, did they have coloring at it? Put two and two together, you might figure it out. Okay. You say, what about craft beers? Uh, what about them? I mean, I'm talking about them. <laughs> um, at least technically. Cool Town Cardinal says, good morning from Arizona. Good morning to you. Scruffy's janitor says, since 1996, we can't make an issue about health concerns of cell phone towers, only property values. Right. That's right. Deregulate. What's up, says Bucky Dent. Chilling. Drinking the bud. Okay. So, sorry I had to recreate this, but... You know, when you screw up, you screw up, you admit it. You just go on, you move on, you admit it. The critics will say, you just want to drink more. You just want to drink more. No, you're wrong again. Don't you get tired of being wrong? Uh, this is a little darker. The sequence is a little bit darker. First of all, let's get something straight. If I wanted to drink more, I would just say it openly. I would just say, I want to drink more. I'm going to do a drinking video. I'm going to drink, 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 and start slurring and get all, you know, reconfigured you know what i'm saying so that's bull right there i would just openly admit it and i wouldn't hide it and i wouldn't even care all right that's not my bag it's other people's bag they'll tell me i drank 12 a 12 pack of paps extra last night and i was really wrecked and i'm thinking to myself that's probably not a good idea you know but it's their business Although I don't recommend it now, but these taste challenges, you know, you got to be focused and it's early in the morning, you know, and I, I might be thinking, oh, let me do this. And then I botch it, you know, so if I botch it, I botch it. How about you? Have you reviewed early times whiskey says sauce money? Thanks for watching sauce money. I appreciate it. Yes, I sure. I certainly have. And I've done early times in a number of taste challenges. If you buy early times in England, it's called early times bourbon. If you buy early times in America, it's called early times whiskey. Because according to the law of the United States, it has to be aged in a new barrel to be bourbon. But early times says aged and used cooperage. <sighs> oh, that's a fancy way of saying aged and recycled barrels because we it's a cheap whiskey and we don't want to waste a new barrel on it. All right. They used to make an early time straight whiskey. They might still make an early time straight whiskey that you can buy in America. Because there's a lot of what we call hidden brands. They exist, they're on the shelf, but never think you'll see it on the internet on the company's website, because you will not. Seagram Seven Crown, well, yeah, I mean, I put the link down below. It's right there on Diageo's thebar.com website. Bellows, I mean, I put the Luxco link. It's a waste of time to look at it because all it says is Bellows. What a heritage going back to 1830, blah, blah, blah. We make a whole line of Bellows products. And that's it. I mean, that's all they tell you. And then you can click on and they'll have a picture of some Bellows products. But to, to get good information about it, no. You probably get more information off that bottle right there. Just reading the label, okay? Mm okay. -hmm. All right. From an early sniff exa exa ex examination. From the early Smith, early Smith, okay. From the early sniff facility, I think, I think that this is the bellows because um, just like with the botched deleted video earlier, 20, 25 minutes earlier, it, it, it has like a sourdough um, thing, which is making me think it's sour mash whiskey. Uh, I know it's coming from Indiana. Well, I don't really know that, but I, I suspect it. See, if they say American blended whiskey, that means it can come from anywhere in America. That's all I got to say. They got to tell you where they bottle it. Like it says bottled in St. Louis, but they don't have to tell you where it's uh, distilled. Well, they're telling you America. <laughs> Yeah, bottled by Bellows, St. Louis, Missouri. Bellows, ha ha, Luxco. Um, so they have to give what they call an, in, in the wine world an appellation. 
the region. Well, the region they're given is America. Convenient. Some of those cheaper wines will say that American red wine. You say, where? America. <laughs> or they'll say California red wine. Where in California? Oh, just somewhere in that state. probably from all over the state. It's various wines they got a hold of that are red. They blend them together, give this generalized flavor. And that's why it's $15 for uh, four liters. You know what I'm saying? It's like this stuff, it's from America. That means it could be whiskeys they got, look. Lux goes out there saying, give us this, give us that. They're getting it blended and a bottle in it. It could be whiskeys procured from all over. Left over this, a little bit of that, some of that's left over. They're blending it together. They're adding it with 80% grain neutral spirits, which is clear corn liquor. Oh, if you want to call it corn alcohol, that's unaged. That's why it's clear. They age it, then it turns color. They might add a little color into it to give it some character because who wants to drink, you know, they don't want it to be too light. And, and they're only, a uh, uh, deal with the contractor is just don't make it taste terrible. All right. They might give them a sample. We want it to taste like this. And the, the guy might say, well, that's very standardized. Oh, that's fine. It's real cheap. Okay. Now Seagram's meaning Diageo, they might say, look, um, they might do the same thing, but I suspect it, it's coming from Midwest green products and they're doing 75 straight whiskeys, plural saying, uh, look, if it could taste, and they're very particular because Seagram's is a well-known product. It's sold in every bar in America, so it's got to taste the same all the time. You know what I mean? It can't vary. It's like Budweiser, Coors, Jack Daniels, you know, anything like that. It's got to be the same. You know, they cannot be having people sending emails like this stuff's off. You know, they cannot deal with that. So they're probably saying just make it taste like this prototype. It's got to have a bourbon, a bourbon presentation. Even though it's not true bourbon, it's got to have that. Okay. So they're saying, all right, you're getting big money for doing this contract. You know, one of the biggest companies in the world as far as liquor, the liquor world. This has to be done to a T. Sure, we'll do it. We want the contract. All right. This is not hard to envision. This is not hard to envision. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's wood, you know. Both of these are aged at least four years. There's no age statement. That's the rule. Now, I know you can look that up. Oh, I can give you the link. At least four years in a barrel. We talking about the straight whiskeys, not the grain neutral spirits, because then they're not neutral spirits anymore. Then they're bourbon. You see, if it's a well, if it's a new barrel, so it's complicated, but it's really simple. Uh, it smells clean, but not super clean, like I thought it would smell with Seagrams, you know, or whatever this is, because I mixed them up. This looks lighter than I bet it's Bellows. This just smells so standard. Let's taste it. Heck. It's got to be. I know I did the last one right, but I was just worried that I botched it, you know, more than anything. So I want to I want I want these things to be straight down the line. Accurate. That's got to be bellows because it's got this water taste. You say water. Yeah. You know, they cut them with water to bring it down to 80 proof and 40 percent alcohol and it does have a it's not a bad water huh no st louis huh mississippi river water they use it for budweiser it's not bad it's just watery <laughs> you know all right doesn't taste boozy though now that's one thing to say it's not like Ugh, it's a bunch of alcohol corn liquor no 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 some of these oh some of these blended American whiskeys, it tastes like a doctor's office. Like it smells like antiseptic, like rubbing alcohol. That's not too good. These don't have that. Either one of these don't. Mm. It's 
It's got to be Seagram's. It's got to be. Wood, mildly charred oak, the vanilla from the oak. It's clearly white oak. And it's clean. Clean. There's no weirdness, offness, or anythingness. Only like perfectedness. You know what I'm saying? It's like Donald Trump told the chef in the White House, you know, he's eccentric. So he tells the chef, make a burger and make it taste like a Big Mac. The chef is like, Monsieur President, we can make the most exotic foods in the world. Perhaps tonight you would like to begin with oysters Rockefeller. You know, he's like, no, I want a hamburger to taste like a Big Mac. So the chef is like doing all that. He could not, he would say, now the burger he was making probably tasted way better than any Big Mac. But Trump was saying, it doesn't taste like a Big Mac, you know? Tastes like some crappy gourmet burger, some expensive crappy gourmet burger. I want a Big Mac. So you got the Secret Service. Go down. You see those golden arches down there? Go get a Big Mac. So they did it. And he's tasting it. That's what I want. You know, so you got that McDonald's standard flavor. Now you might say, well, why would you want that though? I don't know why you would want it necessarily. I just know if you're eccentric and you have these dedicated ideas about things that you could never replicate it. You know what I mean? Like a, a world-class White House chef could never replicate the quintessential Big Mac character. And you and that's what they're trying to do with Secret Seven Crown. They're just making it perfected to what it is. Now, what it is, you may laugh at. And he likes to eat the Kentucky Fried Chicken, chicken, you know, KFC. Now, you might say, oh, no. I understand what you're saying. Okay, I get it. We understand. We, you get the context of what we're talking about. But when you eat KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, it doesn't no, no it nothing else tastes like that, right? Like you could eat fried chicken from all over the world, but it never tastes. It might taste better, it might taste way better, but it never tastes like KFC. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're eating Kentucky Fried Chicken, like it only tastes like that. And when you're eating a Big Mac, it only tastes like a Big Mac. Nothing else tastes like. And with Seagram Seven Crown, I think that's what they're going for. It only tastes like Seagram Seven Crown, and nothing else tastes like it. Have I ever tasted a whiskey that tastes like Seagram? I don't think I have. Am I saying it's world class and it's something to go run after and buy, and you can't miss it? You got to try. No, no, I'm not saying any of that. If you never have Seagram Seven Crown in your whiskey drinking life, fine. You ain't missing much. But you're missing a distinct flavor. That's all I'm saying. It's like nothing else tastes like it. That's all I'm saying. And whether that tastes as good or bad, that's up to you. I think people can follow what I'm trying to communicate here. You can't fake chemical meat with real meat, says Scruffy. That's right. See? Churches is better, says H. Smoke. I agree with that. And I've never tasted anything that tastes like churches. They have their own distinguished flavor. I'm not sure I love churches. You know, I just love their coupons. You know what I mean? Like you can get really full off of their. I want to try that bourbon barrel sauce uh, baked chicken, though. Crown Royal. It's another good example. Is it the best Canadian blended whiskey? I'm pretty sure it ain't. Does anything else taste like it? I'm pretty sure it don't. If you're drinking Crown Royal, do you know you're drinking Crown Royal? Yep. You know. Does anything taste like Budweiser? Heck no. So enough of that. I think I made myself clear. Um, I'm going to say this is the bellows and it's not as good, but is it way worse? No. Would, would it be a good substitute? 
Well, I guess so. It's eight ninety nine for a big liter bottle. It's not too offensive. It says this whiskey is blended for maximum smoothness. All right, I'll go along with that. Smoothness is a sort of a euphemism for dull, in a way, in a way, in a way. It's sort of smooth. It's sort of like just dull. But it makes sense. The label's dull. The descriptions are bland. You say, well, it's not a craft whiskey. There's no funny animals or stuff about the devil. Right. So it's just like basic. You know, if it's a craft beer or a craft whiskey, it's got to have either funny animals or the devil, you know, like pit of hell ale. We concocted this in the pit of hell. Are you ready to experience true evil? Drink this craft beer. I'm like, wow, that's really scaring me. And I'm like, yeah, but you're not gonna put a really evil label there. You know what I mean? It's, I call it politically correct evil. You know what I'm saying? Because I could think of some symbols you could put on a label that there ain't no way that's going to get sold in a store. They might even put you on NBC News. Does this mean this is the rise of this movement? Is it a threat to America? So I'm like, well, that would be real evil craft beer. But then, no. Nah. These edgy guys are all safe. Everything is safe. You say, in other words, it's a bunch of safe, fake, bunk, hooey, BS, garbage, trash. Uh, yeah, <laughs> basically the marketing. You know, it's you know, it's a joke. All right, but the bellows is admittedly bland, and it lives up to its blandness, and I can deal with that because their presentation is like it exists. Don't expect much. And I don't, and I don't get much, and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to say this is Bellows. B, Bellows. Thank you. Seagram Seven Crown. Yeah, it's like nice looking label. You pay a little more. It has some character. It might have some oblique occult references with Seven Crowns. You know, it probably has something to do with, I don't know. I've never been exemplified into that craft. You know what I'm saying? I haven't walked softly through the desert sands. Careful where I tread. You know what I'm saying? Do I ride a little motorbike at the parade and wear a fez? I haven't ascended. I'm not an elder. I'm not a past master. I don't care about all that. But it does taste, you know, distinct. Okay, proper 12, bro. Proper 12. Proper 12. I keep saying it. Metallica's Blackened Whiskey. Okay. Blackened <laughs> from 1988. Uh, Injustice for All. I got that album. First printing, bought it the day it came out. So, what I prefer, Seagram Seven Crown. I prefer it. I'm not engrossed by it. I'm not obsessed with it. I have no great dedication towards it. Like I said at the end of the botch deleted video, if I was looking to drink a blended American whiskey, and I wouldn't be, but for the sake of argument, let's say I was for some reason, I woke up one morning and said, I've got to go buy American blended whiskey. I just, I need that in my life. If I was looking to buy one or to recommend, now it could be I could recommend one because somebody might ask me that. I would say get Seagram Seven Crown. It's the quintessential American blended whiskey. It's not going to change your life, but uh, it does the trick. Um, blended in by, all right, a blend of distinctive character. I agree with that. It is distinct. They didn't say good character. They didn't say world class character. They just said distinctive. It is distinct. It doesn't taste like anything else. 
You say, well, that's 75% grain neutral spirits. That's right. But it's good grain neutral spirits. You know what I mean? Their corn liquor is really good. <laughs> I, I'm joking, but I think that probably is the case. It's a higher grade of it. Uh, integrity, craftsmanship, and tradition. Seagram's. Yeah, okay. Beautiful bottle. God, you got to give them that. It's one of the best looking labels in the whiskey world. Just the embossed. It's brown. It protects it from the light. It's nice looking. I mean, it's, it's a fine looking product. Oh, well. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Um, so now onward and upward, I'm going to do a beer. Uh, what do you call it? Review. I think I'm going to do the Red's Pineapple Ale. You say, oh, wow. Now my life's complete. Okay, well, maybe it is. Uh, do I expect a lot? I expect a lot of coloring. No, I mean, I, 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 I'm not going to joke about Red's because I've been pleased with Red's. You know what I mean? It's it's all right. It's, it's, it's an okay product. Okay, it's okay. You know, I don't hate it. Uh, and then I'm going to post right now, I'm going to start uploading a review for a blended scotch whiskey called Inverhouse Green Plaid. And that's a real company now. Inverhouse is a real distillery. Like they have a real, and it's more than one, a real, uh, what you call it, set, S-E-T, set of distilleries in Scotland. And they're really owned by a Thai company, <laughs> Thailand, uh-oh. Guinness Extra Stout. Oh, yeah, that's a jewel. That's a jewel. Same people that make Seagram Seven Crown, Diageo. They make Johnny Walker whiskey. They make... Um, um, I can't think of the name. Uh, George Dickel. George Dickel. Drink that while eating a pickle. All right, thanks for watching this video production. I have some George Dickel and some Cascade Hollow, actually, unopened. Yeah, I got a great deal on that.